Death Cell was released May 10th, 2017. You can pick it up on Steam for $16.99. Developed and published by Motion Twin. Dead Cells is an indie roguelike metrovania action platformer you explore a sprawling ever-changing castle assuming you're able to fight your way past its keepers in a 2d souls light combat no checkpoints kill die learn repeat monica what were your expectations going into dead cells um <clears throat> so we've we've played quite a few platformers um on this Podcast as well as I just have played a lot of platformers, and I'm, I'm a little burnt out on them, honestly. Yeah. So my expectations into this were not very high. I, uh, I you know, I watched the trailer. Um, from the trailers, I didn't really get a good grasp of exactly what all was involved with the game. Sure. Uh, so I, I was just almost expecting that um, I wasn't going to enjoy it, um, but that I would power through it and give it a a serious review, you know? Um, so that's, those are my expectations. <laughs> really low. Yeah, really low. Uh, for me, I, I, once we, like, kind of, I've seen this game getting hyped up on, like, YouTube and stuff, and a lot of people are playing through it. So I knew going into it, I, I was excited to start playing it uh, because I've heard so much about it. And then just the first impressions of the artwork and, like, the color palette just kind of explode at you when you start looking at this game. So I was super pumped to get into this game. And uh, I, even though, like, we play platformers, I don't think we've played a platformer in this vein. So reading about how it's, like, kind of like a Castlevania thing, I was excited to get to, like, try a game out like that again. Uh, yeah. So what are the things, some of the things that you liked about Dead Cells? Okay, so uh, I have to say that um, I was pleasantly surprised. In fact, I had a difficult time coming up with three things I wasn't as much of a fan of. But jumping into something that I really enjoyed was the weapon system. Yeah. I thought the weapon system was amazing. There is, I know that this is, um, it's early access, right? Uh, yes, it's, it's very, it is early access, but it's a very complete early access. Right, so um, with that, I felt that the weapon system already had an incredible um, amount of content mm -hmm. with it, alongside it, and the fact that it's early access, I'm just like, where are they going to take this? Sure. Um, I, I, I thought that, so basically when you're playing, you can um, pick up different types of weapons and kind of customize your character. Um, based off of the stats for like health skills mm -hmm. and what's the third one I forget uh, skills health and strength strength right um, and then you can have different um, tools that go into uh, those categories mm -hmm. um, there are new weapons that you find within the game and can unlock um, and that's kind of how you start completing your uh, catalog of weapons that you'll you can unlock and switch out mm -hmm. um so i thought that that part was really really fun the, the weapons are creative um and just kind of cool to collect I yeah mean, it's fun to find and them. like like it's it's exciting they just run the gamut you have things that are they call them meat grinders which are just like saws on the ground that like uh really just attack enemies you can drop turrets there's you know for your personal weapons there are hammers javelins swords like and like various swords like Flame ones, ice ones, whips. whips, like electrical whips and stuff for all you freaks out there. This might be the game you've been looking for. Uh, I'm glad That's you... That's what I like. That was, <laughs> I like that electrical whip. <laughs> Heard that. Uh, so I'm glad you brought up the weapon system because I think that's like one of my favorite things about this game is the weapon system. But in the way that it takes a very challenging game and it allows you to beat it in your own play style, in your own creative play style. Uh, right. I had the funnest time in this game going through different builds with the weapons, uh, you know, trying to figure out if I'm going to, you know, play a control character where I'm trying to freeze people and attack them with bigger weapons or play more of a kind of a glass cannon where it's just all out offense or even with the turret system and the meat grinder to play a very skill based person. Uh, character where I'm just using my utility to complete levels and I think that's like a massive strength for this game uh, Right, and especially like 
like Binding of Isaac, I guess, is like the best comparison to this game from what yeah, you're I agree doing. With that. Uh, this is a Binding of Isaac Castlevania platformer. Uh, the amount of combinations that you can create with the weapons and stuff is mind blowing. And I played this game for probably like 10 hours, uh, which, believe me, for my schedule, that is obsessed to be able to fit that in for 10 hours. Yeah. Uh, yep. So I, I can't wait to play this game more and see how much more you can do with the weapon system. Uh, what's something else you liked about this game? So one of the things that I ran into that I thought was uh, really interesting were the curses. I think that that's the, what you would call the game yeah. element, where you can open up uh, a chest and um, it will c provide you with items, gold, and, and like extra items, but you get cursed. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was really, really fun because it adds this... If you're having, you you don't have to open this chest up, but like if you're having a an easier time with the game, you can make it more challenging yeah. or more risk taking yep. with the curses. It's, it's a gamble. So, right, it is. It is a gamble, and I thought that that was really fun. Um, I am by no means great at the game, um, but I am an idiot, so I just <laughs> go went ahead and took the. <laughs> uh, but I went ahead and took the. Uh, the curse at least once and just immediately died after um but i i thought that 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 was a really unique aspect to the game something that um adds this additional layer mm -hmm. um and that's that's kind of how i felt this game like there's just so many different dynamics as you're going through these levels that um that change how you have to play mm -hmm. and the curses is another yeah. one yeah you know? Yeah, I have this great story where, like, I was having, at the time, it was, like, the best run I ever had. I, I had, like, such good items. My stats were rocking. And I didn't realize, but there were the locked doors that you pay to open with your gold, uh, you can break those open and attack them. And if you do, that puts a curse on you. And so here on my best run, I accidentally did it. And then I had the curse why I had to kill 40 enemies without getting hurt, hit to lift the curse. And, like, it just... I made it about I don't know eight enemies in, and it just just I got destroyed, and I had to walk away from the computer. I was really upset about it. Yeah. Uh, something else I really liked about this game has to be the art from this game. Uh, to call it a retro pixel game is to kind of undersell it. Its main selling point is its pixel art, but the lighting system that they incorporate into it. Uh, this is like I don't know how they do it, but the pixels in the world as as it's moving and like parallaxing it starts to cast shadows and these like blooms of light on your screen and it is just absolutely gorgeous and like the color palette is gripping uh and the whole time like every level you go through just adds another layer of beautiful art from this team and i never got bored with any of the level design any of the enemy design everything seemed fresh and I played this game, like I said, for 10 hours, and I never felt like it was stale. Right. I actually, that that's the on my list here, uh, weapon system curses and art style. I, I think I would be really um, messing up if I didn't say how, how fun it is. I just feel like every element to this, to, to Dead Cells, mm -hmm. uh, there was time and effort put into it um, from the, the weapons, from the um, just like the UI of the game, yeah. um, from the background, from the characters, from the enemies. The art is is unique, and it's why why is that though? Because it, to me, it was almost like the characters are your character almost blends in because of the the color palette, right? But he's still unique. I don't know. It was almost... He's definitely... Almost... I think your character is using colors that aren't used elsewhere in the game. There's not a lot of beiges or greens in this game. And that's what your mm -hmm. character is mainly lo uh, rocking. And so he, you're able to stand out. And he's got that big light on the top of his head that they, they shine with right. the lighting system. So it's just like so smart. Such a smart way but to do that. He blends in too. I feel like he blends in too in a mm -hmm. way that I really liked. I don't know. Um, but yeah, art style was definitely 100% on my list. Yeah. I think the last thing for me would just have to be the kind of control system and how the game felt like so crisp. 
everything was responsive. Every move you made felt like it had a purpose. There was no lag between anything you're doing. And if there was delay, it's kind of meant to be the gameplay element. Like you're using a hammer, it's gonna take a little bit longer to swing. If you're using daggers, it's gonna be absolutely fast and a, a biting attack. And that really lends itself to like the overall design of the game and how fast they want you to play it because there are speedrun elements to this game built into it. And I don't think that you can get something that good without a control system and a game running so crisp. Like the programming in this game is just as well done as the art system. You just kind of can't see it. All right, let's move into some of the things that we did not like about Dead Cells. Where you at on this? Um, I wonder if you're going to argue with me on this I'll one, argue with you about anything. Just let me know. Okay. <laughs> so I felt that the music felt out of place. Um, I'll agree with that. I didn't dislike it, and I also didn't think that it drew away too much from the game itself. But it felt out of place, it, it, like heavily out of place. At I would love to argue with you on this, but I, I'm the same way. It's on my list. The music doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily bad. It's just kind of lackluster and be like very forgettable. Uh, mm -hmm. Thinking about the music in this game, looking back, I just can't remember it. I don't know what it was playing. And we mm -hmm. just reviewed Rhyme, which was such a huge uh, music. Like the score for that game was so massive. And maybe that biased me a little bit. I don't know, but I, I agree with you. Music in this game was not, uh, wasn't on par with everything else going on in the game. Uh, what's something else you didn't dislike about Dead Cells? Um, so the enemies, not not the way that they looked, and not the um, abundance of them. Um, but more so the fact that they can hit you and see you through almost everything. And mm. I don't know if I was playing it differently, but like when you're using some of your um, like skills or bombs, you can only um, shoot from the floor that you're on yeah. or the level that you're on, but the enemies can drop crap on you from wherever. And I just don't think that that's fair. How are, they how are they shooting their bombs through walls and doors and you can't even drop one below you? I kind of agree with you on that. Uh, that's not something I had on my list, but you do have a valid point there. You cannot cross over uh, kind of levels unless there's a big gap in the floor. But those dudes, there are multiple enemies that throw bombs and missiles at you through walls, and that is frustrating. You are completely right with that. Yeah, man, they mess me up all the time, <laughs> and it's very infuriating. Um, so yeah, the enemies, um, in, and I, I guess along this is, I guess this is my last complaint, mm -hmm. and it, but it still has to deal with enemies. Um, I know that there are different types in the game. Um, you know, I have less time in it than you do Brian but I felt that some of them felt a little bit repetitive in comparison to how how unique the weapon system is um, and, and how many options there are with the weapon system I felt that the enemies it just kind of didn't feel like I was running into a lot of new types right I, I could see that they are kind of pulling on different the, on the same elements but just in a little bit different ways I think uh, mm -hmm. I, I do see that I think that maybe that adds to my next point, what I didn't like about this game. Uh, it's just that the very, especially the beginning areas of this game, even though everything felt fresh and like good, in terms of art, what's actually going on, what you're playing through, does get a little bit repetitive in the very beginning areas. Uh, you do die a lot in this game, so you're just playing through those starting uh, levels so many times, and I don't think this game is as randomly generated as uh, you would think, and like Binding of Isaac, there definitely seems to be a certain set of uh, levels, and then like you get a, one of those random levels. It's not like you're walking into completely new areas. And I was just listening to an interview with the people from the, who did Rain World, and that guy was talking about how he did over 11,000 different levels. So that like they weren't randomly generated, but every every time you played, it would be different. Like the level designer put the work in to do that. 
maybe 11,000 is not the right number. Don't quote me on that. But he, he made it sound like it was just a painstakingly long uh, procedure for him. And they did not do this in this game. You do go through the same areas. You're hitting the same notes. And it just gets a little bit repetitive. I got one more thing I didn't dislike about the game. Are you kind of finished up on that? Yeah. Uh, this isn't something I disliked about the game. It's one of those missed opportunities that I feel I see a lot in games. Uh, I wish you could, like, adjust more of your character and add more, I guess, armor pieces and rings and stuff. I... You can adjust like the amulet you're wearing, uh, the two types of weapons you're holding, and I wish there was more of that for some reason. I, I think it's because like I bit off just a little bit and I wanted like the whole sandwich. If you could change more than just your weapons and what necklace you're wearing, I feel like the game has so much more potential in that area that they're kind of missing out by not going down that road. Mm -hmm. Well, it is an early access, so... Yeah. Maybe they'll add that. Hopefully they will. If they're listening to this, uh, I, I, I'm going to make this game. I'm going to make you millionaires. Just add armor pieces. You guys got this. Uh, final thoughts on Dead Souls for you. What you looking at? So what's crazy is I think, you know, maybe with the hectic aspect of my schedule right now and everything else I've got going on and my initial expectations of this game, um, I pretty much did a... A 180. I <laughs> really think that this is a fantastic game. I think the price point is right on. Yeah. Um, I, it's definitely worth that price point. Um, and after, you know, after I played, I started, I wanted to see like what other people, obviously Steam has, I think it's, it says mostly positive or like very positive or whatever, mm -hmm. um, reviews. I wanted to see what other people were saying, and a lot of people were saying that this, especially because it's early access, so sometimes people feel frustrated. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people were saying this feels, that their expectations of this um, are, this could be like a Darkest Dungeon early access game. Right. In the sense that Darkest Dungeon performed, they did a great job of keeping the community um, update, you know, updated mm -hmm. um, and involved with the releases of new content. And I hope that takes place because I think that this is, it's already fun. It's already worth the 16, but, um, but a finalized version of this game is, is worth I, I, hours and hours upon hours of gameplay. Yeah. So I'm a thumbs up. I'm kind of the same uh, vein as you, like 16.99 for this game. I've gotten 10 hours out of it already, and I already tell I want to keep going back to this game over and over. I don't... Mm -hmm. You know, I've beat one boss in this game so far. There is so much more of this game I haven't seen and that I want to get into. I do, like, they are constantly updating this game. They updated it while I was playing it. Like, on uh, the next day I jumped on, there's already new stuff in it. This development team is on point. They love the game they're making. They love the community that they're making it for. And I think everyone should be a part of it. This is might be one of my top games I've played uh, in this year, definitely. And I think it's the best game that we've played on the podcast for me so far to this oh, point. Yeah. It's a, uh, I am in love with Dead Cells. Um, I, I'd put a ring on it. You know, it's I'm, wow. I'm there for it. Uh, wow. So Dead Cells released May 10th, 2017 for 1699 on Steam. Developed and published from Motion Twin.